Hey everybody, I'm Amy. I'm Dan. And we're the Hustle Couple coming at you today with the Daily Grind on a Tuesday. That's right. It is Tuesday. We are back. Uh, we have fully recovered from the crazy two-hour shipping madness yesterday. Never again. Whoa. Thank you guys for hanging in there. Like Some of you watched this pack of television for 30 minutes. Yes. I mean, it was action-packed 30 minutes. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Gripping. Gripping YouTube content. Uh-huh, yeah. But, like, really, thanks for sticking it out and giving us some really good feedback. We are not selling tvs anymore we Probably still, not. you know that's what that's what this channel's about <laughs> and that's what watching each day is about seeing yeah. what works and what doesn't and the trials and tribulations i feel like there's not enough of that on youtube i agree with that people aren't like i messed up right yo we <laughs> messed up like we sure did whoa whoa seven dollars profit mm -hmm. did you hear me seven seven anyway hot tips hot tips don't sell tv <laughs> Think twice <laughs> before yeah. selling a TV because you got to pack it. And then you see this one didn't even have the AV cable. So we had to lower the price. Right. And that was that was the biggest issue. Ooh, yeah. I mean, unless you have something real, 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 real special, maybe think twice or three times about it. <laughs> right. Mm. All right. So what are we doing today? Okay. So today we're going to take you on a tour of our workflow. How our daytime looks when you're not here with us. Yeah. Most of you are here with us all day, including all night, because we ship, I mean, we list live at nighttime on our mm -hmm. Facebook group, and then you see us for most of the afternoon, but you don't see us in the morning. So right. we're going to show you this morning what we do before we start shipping. And I'm going to go over the receipt printer again, Ooh, all right. because we've had some questions, and you know, not everybody watches every video. So I'm going to quickly go over that again. What? And I'm not everybody uh, watches every video. You should. <laughs> you should like and subscribe. Okay, anyways... Uh, we're going to go over how I did with the death pile challenge. Remember, I had two days to list 40 things. Yes. We're going to see how that's working out. Awesome. And then we're going to watch Dan. He does listing too, okay? Like, I'm not the only one here. He is listing some sport coats today. So we're going to go over there and show you what that looks like. Yep. So hopefully there's something for everybody in this video. Yeah. So stick around. Okay, friends. So I'm going to list these chucks. These were just in our death pile. I don't recommend like going out and sourcing these specifically, but they were there. I think they, I use these in a costume. Okay, here's what you need to know about Chucks. Come on in here. What are we looking at here? Can you focus? Yes. So the size here is very dependent on this category called gender, women's. This will tell you whether this is a women's shoe, a unisex shoe, a boy's shoe, a men's shoe. Chuck sizes are crazy. This right here is the style number, W9160. So what I'm going to do is hop on over to the eBay and I have typed in Converse Black High Top W9160. Okay. These are our women's seven and I should have typed that in. Mm -hmm. I'm type in seven. I'm in the solds. I don't care what's listed right now because this is a high top. They're, they're the same. I, I don't, I have nothing to compete with. I'm just going to look at the average price. But I am looking for the size because I'm going to sell similar from a sold listing. And if I can sell similar from the right size, odds are the specifics won't be messed up. Right? Okay, so if you can find the size, it's probably better. Sometimes you can't. But see, look here. 2015 new Converse Chuck Taylor All-Star High Top Women's Size 9 in Black Men 7. So you don't get your tubes tangled. Huh? <laughs> Wires, Wires crossed. crossed. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, <clears throat> so that's what we're going to do here. I'm just going to copy. So these sold for, be when it has the line through it, that means it sold for best offer. And so somewhere around here, I'm going to list these for $34.95. That's what I'm going to do. These were new. These are pre-owned. Let's go. Let's do this pre-owned. Click on it. And then I go sell one like this. All right. Obviously, I'm going to get an offer on these. So that's cool. I don't know why they've abbreviated black here, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and just, you know. Fix that. I am. Women's, see, this is all backwards. I'm going to fix this. So I'm going to take this part of the beginning here because I want Converse Chuck Taylor to be the first thing for SEO, search engine optimization. People uh -huh. are going to look for the brand first. That's true. Nobody's going to type in black. Or Con seven U.S. women's. Right. Yeah. No. Okay. No. So we're going to go <clears throat> U.S. women's. 
And then we're gonna put size seven before the end. You don't wanna put it at the very, very end because your SEO cuts off. Uh, casual shoes black and then the style number is fine at the end. Okay, and then we're gonna put EUC. I try to use up as many characters as possible. Fine. Uh, Dan did clean these for me with the sneaker cleaner. Hey, all right. They look pretty good. Decent. Okay, uh, we have two sets of numbers here. The 3000s, which are gonna have to jump to the 5000s soon. And the 4,000s. Now, 4,000s we use for things that we store in boxes, like shoes, purses, suit coats, that kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. And then the 3,000s are stuff we store in the bags, clothes, bras. In the boxes on our shelves. Box, right. Bags and boxes. And that's, I mean, that's just our own system so that we know, based on the number, where to go look for it. So since <clears> these are, and so that's why I have, I'm listing clothes and shoes today. So since I have both on my desk, I'm going to take the next one, 4281. Just gonna put it right here for now, 4281, enter that into my SKU. And then I'm going to go here and put E money sign, and that says, and when I push the space bar, it's a shortcut. That's it says, amazing. Pre owned condition. Let us know below if you want a tutorial on how to do that. I know you do. I know, I you, know do. you do. Yeah, anybody using uh, iOS, you can, I mean, there's ways to do it on PC, but it's easier on the Mac. So here we go. Shoe <clears throat> size is already filled in for seven, and it's women's. See, that's why I like to pick one that is similar to mine. Yeah. And hopefully all of this is correct. I'm just looking over it very, very quickly. I'm not filling in all of this. I normally fill in vintage. No. Okay, so I'm going to take the... Okay, I'm going to fix that. I'm going to take this and copy it. My title. You used to have to rearrange it. You don't have to do that anymore, in my opinion. Excellent use condition here. And then I'm just going, I already said by looking at the sold, I remember 34.95 is what I'm gonna go for. I'm gonna try to move these. Uh, I'm gonna charge. So we've been putting things, we just got these in today, the regional rate box A. Okay. And I'm gonna take a chance because I want these to move. So I'm gonna price this at our priority rate, which is 8.99. Okay. Because we live in the middle of the country and odds are, odd, I mean, it's a right, little bit of a gamble. It, right, unless it's going all the way to the coast. Or something. Yeah, in New York or something like that. Yeah. We can normally ship for about eight bucks. So we might get hit and, you know, have to ship it for 11 and lose a dollar or two. But I want the person to buy my shoes because the shipping's lower. Because the ones that sold, the shipping was like 15 or 12. Okay. okay. So I'm going to try to get a little edge a Good strategy. There. Yep. I don't want to hold on to these checks. And they're, they're a dime a dozen. It's not like I found something. I'm promoting at 1%. Maybe I'll do 1.7. Oh. I know. I'm crazy today. Crazy every day. All right. So then I'm going to save it as a draft. Then I'm going to open up my white Microsoft Word template here. This connects to my receipt printer, which is right here. It's the Star TSP 103 Future Print. Future Print. There it is right there. Uh, I think any USB thermal receipt printer will work. This is not the same as a label printer. Right. This only takes receipt printer paper. But it's thermal. It's great. So I'm going to copy and paste my title right back here. Title. There it goes. And I'm going to put my new number, 4281. And we got these for free because they just appeared in our house. Today's date is uh, 125.22. I'm going to go Command P. This is a Microsoft Word template i just made it the paper size which is three inches wide and however long i wanted it so i go control p this receipt printer hooks up to our computer via usb and the computer just thinks it's any other printer right so you just select, like right here you could select star or our hp printer instead i'm just selecting the star printer that's it okay it's a printer um if you buy one of these receipt printers and you want our word template that's already pre-configured to the right size just send us an email mm -hmm. to our email address below i mean it's not pretty no but it works it works that's all that matters and i'll e i'll email you the word document okay so what i'm doing in this workflow here so i'm gonna put this sticker because dan does something with the box i don't know i'm putting the sticker in the ticket on to here and then tonight in our live list dan will take photos of these in our photo box and they're ready to go. Yeah. Okay, let's check in on how much I've listed. All right, let's do it. I'm pretty excited. Action. Okay, so if you remember yesterday, the whole desk was covered. Now everything in a box has been listed in a draft form and they have a ticket with it and a number. So I listed two purses. Uh, the Juni and Burke purse is being so is soaking right now. The interior of it was thrashed. So I have two purses ready. I have all of these shoes done. Yeah, these are all shoes. 
I have not done this yet. I'm going to ask Dan to test this Discman July 2000. Oh, wow. Okay. And it has this like card tape thing. I don't know. We got it at the bin. So this needs to be tested, but we'll get that done before tonight. I haven't listed this piece of art yet, but I did go ahead and steam all of the clothing. Which is so, on this side. Yes. So once I do all of the clothing, that will get us to our 20 items for tonight to list. I'm trying to do 25 items so that we have enough to get through the weekend. Okay. Uh, but I'm on track. I think I can do these clothes after we... So we finish shipping around 3, 3.30, and then Dan edits the video, and then we have dinner, and then we start listening, live listing at 7. So normally I have a couple of hours. And I think since these are already steamed, I should just be able to do that same listing process I just showed you, put a ticket on them, and then it'll be ready to take photographs tonight. So we'll do half of our live list... Uh, let me take this off. Half of our live list will be done in the photo box, which we'll show you. And then the, then we'll get out the flat lay and the other half will be done that way. I'm going to, I don't think any of these need mannequins. I don't think so. This is a new thing for us trying to do clothes and shoes and hard goods at the same time. So we're trying to figure out that workflow and how a mannequin would come into the equation because <laughs> of our limited space and having to change setups. We don't want to waste any time. Right. So I think we can do flat lay with this. I might have a mannequin or two pre-dressed. I'm going to maybe think of that. If there's one or two items that would benefit, we'll see. We'll let you know. Okay. So let's show them where the photo box is. Let's do it. This mannequin is just as tall as you are. <laughs> Dan has this ready to set up because he is going to be taking photos of suit jacket. And uh, we always put a shirt and a tie. Yes. This is a good tie because it has blue, gray, and black in it. So it really contrasts with the coat so you can tell what color the coat is. That's exactly why I picked that tie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's a good one. Okay, let's show them the inside the photo box. This is where we photo our hard goods. Yes. It's 36. Here's the little switch. Right. It's in this little cave. So for, yeah, for those of you who don't know what's going on here, this is a little, so this is actually, there's a staircase right there. <laughs> under so this the is stairs. underneath the stairs. So, I mean, you can see, you know, this is the back side of the staircase. And then underneath here, we have our box and packing material storage. And then... Right on the other side is the photo box. It is wedged. It is wedged in here. We have it sitting on top of this awesome uh, foldable IKEA table. And that, you know, puts it up at a workable height. But I'm going to duck in here so you can actually see what's happening. Oh. <laughs> you every time. I know, right? So there's the inside of the light box. And like I said, it's wedged in here. We actually had to assemble the thing inside this little space to be able to fit it in here. It's so. 36 by 36 by 36. Yes. And we like that size because we can put other things like board games. I mean, a lot of things fit in that. And it's always set up. So it's very, very quick for us to list hard goods. Yep. Sometimes we take pictures of clothes in there like t-shirts and stuff like that just because it's so easy. Right. Okay. So I think we're going to cut here and then we're both going to get some work done and I'll come back and show them how you're working. Okay. In your, in your zone. See, this is Dan's zone, <laughs> and I'm on the other side of the wall. Show right. them how the wall goes. Oh, the ring light's going to be in the way. No. Sorry, guys. So the shipping station is built against this this wall, which separates our closet office. It's like the Berlin Wall. Into, into, into two halves. So there's the shipping station and my workspace back over there. And on the other side of the wall is Amy's desk. And there we go. Work time. Work time. Oh, hey, guy. Hey, guys. How's it going? What are you doing? I am setting up my mannequin here in this backdrop to take pictures of a couple of sport coats. Okay. So what we use as a backdrop, this is just a, um, a blackout window shade. Mm -hmm. Roll-up window shade. It, it, we have it attached up here. Uh, the installation is incredibly simple. It's two clips. They take two screws each. So four screws, two clips, and it clips on and you're done. And then we'll just lower this guy down. We have a lot of crap. Sorry, yeah, guys. Yeah, a lot of stuff in the way. It's fine, but, but it helps us utilize this wall, which we couldn't use because there's a door in it. Yeah, you yeah. know. I mean, photo room will take care of any other background stuff, but this just makes it much easier to get nice, clean pictures. For those of you new to our channel and you would wonder how we got this magnificent lighting, <laughs> yes. there is a lighting tutorial that we did last week that you can just look in our uh, Daily Grind videos and it says lighting in the title. Check it out. It's pretty good, I do say. Okay. 
<laughs> so this is the sport coat that I'm going to be taking pictures of. And what brand is it? Do you want to show us? Sure. So <clears throat> this is from Jack Victor, okay. which is the comps on this brand are pretty good. I don't pick this brand up a whole lot anymore. But the reason I got this one, there's two reasons I picked this one. First one is that it's a big and tall size. Okay. And second, it is 100% Loro Piana Cashmere. Ayo. So whenever you hot see... Tip. Hot tips. That phrase is trademark of the Hustle Cup link. <laughs> um, whenever you see this uh, Loro Piana label, this is what they look like. Loro Piana is a fabric mill. Wait, let me zoom on in here. Come on now. Right. It is a fabric mill in Italy. So... They produce very, very high quality fabric and then sell that to other fashion houses or designers or whatnot. So it's just, a, it's a more, what's the word I'm looking for? Luxury. It's a more luxury fabric. Exactly right. So what, it's just real simple. I just take the jacket. This is, like I said, it's a big and tall. So I am going to use uh, some binder clips in the back to just kind of, to kind of pull yeah our mannequin's about a size 42 it's pretty average size if you yeah i'm going to pull the sides of this jacket in just a little bit so that it looks a little more fitted in the pictures because it would be fitted on the correct size mannequin right now we do have a man mannequin <laughs> a mannequin mannequin but for many years Two, to be exact, <laughs> we used uh, a little pla plastic dress form that just hang on the wall. Yeah. So you don't need a man mannequin to sell menswear, but it sure does help. So you can see with the binder clip in place, you get this nice little, this fitted look right here, which is what, which is what I'm after anyway. <laughs> it looks so short. It's hard for me to like get this angle. You want me to raise this guy up a little bit? Does he go up more? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Raise him up. All right. Raise the roof. There we go, because then I can get you and him. There we go. <laughs> okay. And the pictures that I go through for sport coats, it is a little bit more involved, but I've found that if I just take all of those pictures, it shows the potential buyer every part of the jacket that they want to see. So I start with a just a basic picture from the front. Um, I take a picture of this portion of the jacket right here, of just the lapel. So you can mm -hmm. get, uh, so you can see what style lapel it is. Sure. And uh, I also use that picture to try to highlight the print or the fabric itself. Um, I will also turn, turn it around and get a picture of the back of the jacket. And then the back it. The back it, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then the extra steps that I take and uh, some other uh, menswear sellers take. I learned this from somebody else's uh, eBay store. You take the jacket, you flip it all the way inside out, and then put it back on the mannequin so that you can uh, show the lining. Nice. A, a lot of times, you know, sport coats come in a lot of different um, configurations. They can be fully lined, they can be partially lined. The lining can be plain like this. It can be very uh, ornate. Ex ornate, extravagant, you know, whatever. So I just, again, I take a picture from this side and also from the back. And it also lets you see if it's a single vent or double vented jacket and all that good stuff. And if there's like pit stains, I hate that. <laughs> a lot of times the lining is like discolored. Yes. Um, more often than not, the size tag Ooh, of a jacket, of a sport coat, in. will be in the inside uh, chest pocket. Um, and it's either, you know, this tag is a 46 extra long. There you go. Love it. Love it. Uh, the designer tag will usually be over on the other side. And again, in this case, it has the fabric tag down there as well. Mm, okay. Okay. So let's just listen. I'll just stand back here and All right. watch you work. <laughs> Y'all look at this man's shirt. Come here. Come here. Look at my husband. Look how cute he is. Oh, <laughs> that's the kind of stuff we need on the internet. <laughs> This is Dan in his natural habitat. Hey guys. All right, so we're gonna actually take the pictures of this and you can see how they turn out. So we have our 45 degree side light coming in. I've got my LED floodlight in my hand as the front light. You can kind of see what happens with the shadow, right? When I move this up and down. Yeah. So I'm gonna line this thing up right about here to keep the shadow directly behind the garment. 
And I am shooting in, you know, behind the ring light, but we're not using it. Oh, see, I got a little more shadow at the bottom. So my light is uneven at the bottom. So I'm gonna it's bring because this down we raised that mannequin, bit. I think. Yeah, I think you're right. So there's the... You could put your headlight more to the bottom. Yeah, that's what I did. Okay. We're just using the iPhone 10. We don't have fancy phones. Nope, don't have fancy phones. I'd like a fancy phone. <laughs> Where do we get a fancy phone? We're upgrading soon, okay? Are we? Maybe. Nice. <laughs> Okay. And obviously the more you do this, you will get faster at it. So I know it does seem <clears throat> like it's a little time consuming and it is, but. We're trying to do one or two a day. Yeah. Cause we have approximately 2000 to get through. That's exactly right. <laughs> that's, there, that's not an exaggeration. <laughs> there's no shortage of, thr of uh, these at the thrift. We find designer sport coats every time we go, even at the bins. Yeah, we came home with a Burberry last time from the bins. We sure did. Like a newer one, too. We sure did. It sold <laughs> overnight. It's over the shoulder shot, though. Okay. We put all of our photos into an app called Photo Room, and that takes out the background for us, which makes it much easier to not care about the shadows. That's, I'm getting a big hot spot there. I don't need quite that much light on these. Oh, that's you doing that, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally me. So you can see with these floodlights, if you get too close with them, they give you a hot spot and that's no good. No bueno. No bueno. So you don't always need it. That's a front light, but you've got adequate lighting from the sides to get exactly what you need. Come on, tag, work with me here. There you go. <clears throat> and one from the back. And then everyone's so curious, how do you measure it? Oh man, that's the best part. Is it? No. <laughs> it's actually not. <laughs> Come on, camera. There we go. And there we go. All right, so now I've got all my pictures and we will show you how to properly measure this guy. Okay, here we are at the shipping station slash measuring station. That's exactly right. Um, so <clears throat> what we have, we have this really cool uh, measuring tape that is attached to my desk here. Uh, this one was <clears throat> sticky and we got it off Amazon, but we also on my desk have it just taped, a regular measuring tape. Yeah, this was, it was it's like metal and it's very rigid and sticky, so it's great. Um, but what you want to do, you want to take your sport coat and lay it down flat with the button buttoned so that it is the correct size. Does that make sense? Flatten it with the button button, like smooth it. Yeah. You, then you take each of the arms and you kind of raise the arms up like so. Raise it up. And then you can see, so after it's all the way flat, from this point to this point is the armpit to armpit measurement. Whoa, this is hard for me. Yeah, hold yeah, on. Hold on. I'm working on it. Oh, yeah. Okay, put <laughs> okay. your finger there. Right there. That point. All the way over to this one. Yeah, this is Oscar-worthy camera work, okay? Okay. All right. And then it's just easier for me, you know, to not to try to put it all the way to the edge. So I'm going to use a steel tape. And I'm going to measure it from, from that one point to one point, And you can see that measures 25 inches. 25 inches. Where's so your wipey board? 25 inches flat gives you a 50-inch chest. <clears throat> chest measure. Okay, can you show them this this board we have? I sure can. There you go. So the, all I did was make this on the Microsoft Word. I printed it out and we put it in a picture frame. And then we write on top of the picture frame. Yeah, with dry erase. It's yep. very, very quick. It is. Um, let me just double check because I think this, what was the size of this thing? 46 extra long, I believe. Yeah. So this thing measures, yeah, it's a 46 extra long. But it's also a big and tall, so I think you are wider at the top with a big and tall. Yeah, because normally when I you have get a... your face. Hold on one second. Okay. Y'all, I got this. You Boom. Got okay, now hold that up. Yes. There oh, you go. <laughs> Oscar worthy. Here we go. So in most cases, when you have a 46 sized jacket, you want to add, like I said, most cases you add two. So a 46 size jacket will most oftentimes measure 48 inches. Okay, uh, this one measures 50, 
and I don't again, that's either because it's a big and tall size exactly. or it might just be Jack Victor's stuff tends to run a little larger. I'm not 100% sure on that. But well, I do every brand, every designer sizes slightly differently. That is true, but costume designer Amy behind the camera here. Yes. Uh, when I dress big and tall people, always, because their shoulders tend to be broader in a ah, big and tall. There you go. And the waist normally is is slimmer. Right. Okay. And speaking of the waist measurement, you always you take that right about right about the middle button. Uh, on a two button jacket, uh, the top button. On a three button, uh, you use the middle. Middle button. Okay. And again, most of the time in a standard cut sport coat. The difference between your chest measurement and the waist measurement laying flat is going to be one inch. So, and, and that's true in this case. So the chest measured 25 flat and the waist measures 24. Okay. Okay. Um, if it's a two inch difference, that is slim, slim fit. Slim fit. Exactly right. Okay. The shoulder measurement. So that's is, how you can answer that question. If you're listing menswear, right. people will, will me, if you don't put it in the listing, they'll say, is this slim fit? Right. Just look at the difference in size. Okay, for the shoulder measurement, you keep the jacket in the same position. Ooh. It's flat and you want to measure from, <laughs> from one shoulder seam straight across to the other. So that's right at 20 inches. 20 inches. Okay. We're gonna, we'll write that on here, 20 inches. Okay, the sleeve measurement can be a little bit tricky because there are two, there, the standard sleeve measurement, you measure from the center of the back. Hold on, I gotta show them. Okay, show us the standard. Okay, so it's a two-part measurement. The first part, you measure from the center of the back to the shoulder seam, which is 10 and a half inches. Uh -huh. And then you add 10 and a half from here, you measure all the way down to the end of the sleeve, to the cuff, which is 29. So 29 plus 10 and a half is 39 and a half. That, that is, is long. very long sleeve. This is like okay. how you get, you know, when you see dress shirts that say 34 slash 35, that's the measurement they're referring to. So 39 yes. and a half is very long. Very long. Which yep. is great because someone is going to need this size <clears throat> yep. and they'll find it in our shop. Okay. And the last measurement that I take on every sport coat is the length. And when we're talking about length, we're talking about the length of the back of the jacket from just underneath the collar. So I start my tape right right there at the tag, just underneath the collar. Mm -hmm. And I run it all the way down Ooh. to the end of the jacket. That's 35 inches. And that is definitely considered extra long. Um, regular jackets are like 30, 31. So. Uh, okay, and that's all the measurements. Okay, so and then I'm can you gonna... show them the board? This is what we take a picture of. Yeah. And we put this in our listing. And then I just put C measurements in, in photos. No yeah. one ever looks at them. No. But that's where we <laughs> put them. But, but they're there should anybody decide to take a look. So the last thing I'm going to do before I put this in the box, uh, I'm going to take, uh, I've already taken pictures of all the labels and everything. Um, I store these inside out to help prevent wrinkles. I don't know 100% if that actually works, but somebody on YouTube told me to do it and I've just done it ever since. We trust everything we hear on YouTube. <laughs> That's not true. <laughs> so what I do is you, I put my hand inside the shoulder and pop the shoulder pads all the way inside out, like so. And then I grab the jacket like that, just fold it in half and then into thirds. We've been storing our suits in these regional boxes because they're smaller. They're great. We yeah. don't always send them in the regional, but the storage of them is great. For sure. So just take we'll regional fin finish A, this right? All the way out. Yeah, this is a, a regional A. And most of the time, this is a big and tall, so it might stick out a little bit. But I usually have no issues getting sport coats into these boxes. So there we go. And we store them up here. You can see those are all sport coats up there. <laughs> and hammocks of plush. We use lots of vertical space in here. Yeah. And there it is. Packed up and ready to go into inventory. Boom. Uh-oh, Dan's uh -oh. over at Amy's station. That's exactly right. We had to switch computers, but that's okay. We did. All right, so I am going to 
try to find uh, a, a comp for this Jack Victor. The Jack Victor Loro Piana Cashmere Sport Coat. Let's just see what that brings up. There are 38 results. Oh, and these are not priced well. Wow. Okay. Good to know. So I'm going to go with the, the solds. Okay. So these are, the solds are comping decent. So there's one over $100. There's another one for $150, uh, $99.99. That's kind of what, that's the range I'm looking for. Okay. <laughs> there's 21. I'm going to sort these highest to lowest price just so I can kind of see what I'm working with. And I'm also going to select just pre-owned condition. All right. So it looks like the most expensive recent sold comp is $199.99. Okay. Not bad. We also have to consider that it's a big and tall. Right. So it's a harder to find size, which may make it more valuable. I agree with I that. I think people think the opposite. They think if it's a, if it's a unique size to price it lower because mm -hmm. it's a needle in a haystack. I disagree. I do too. You have to go online to buy that thing anyway. So I'm going to, I'm going to copy this listing right here. The one that's sold for a hundred bucks. hundred or 200? 100. Okay. Why did you copy that one of all of them? Because it's, it's not the highest, um, priced sold comp. Okay. And I think I kind of want to price it kind of in the middle Good. so that it'll move. So I'm going to sell one like this and then I'm going to change all of my specifics. So I'm going to leave Jack Victor here. I'm just going to alter that so that it's, what is happening? He's typing backwards. Yeah, you have to start again. It's my 3D mouse. Oh. You can't highlight and delete. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Can't I'm just used to it now. Jack Victor in lowercase. Okay, Loro Piana. It is not brown. It is blue uh, with a check, right? Window pane? Oh, it is a window pane, isn't it? So, okay, let's see. Suit, jacket, sport coat, blazer. Those are redundant. So I'm going to take out suit jacket and blazer because it's technically neither of those <laughs> yeah so i'm going to call this a blue window pane 100 percent cashmere sport coat size 46 xl we're going to give... uh can i make a suggestion absolutely extra long extra because long. extra large is right. the same x, x long there we go uh, that's going to be 4283 is our next inventory number. Uh, it is in suit and suit separates. Okay. Yeah, Let's always see. double check the category because people get it wrong. They really do. Yeah, it's pre owned. It is excellent pre owned condition. Photos. Let's go ahead and drop the photos in. From... So, Dan photo roomed these while we were gone. Yep. And he airdropped them to the computer. There we go. So we're just going to, boom, nine pictures coming in. While those are loading, I'm going to continue to check all of our item specifics. So Jack Victor type blazer, no. This is a sport coat. If you don't know the difference between a sport coat and a blazer. You're going to lay it down for us. I'm going to lay it down. Come on. A blazer is either blue or black, solid blue or black with metal buttons. If it does not. If it's not blue or black and metal buttons, it is not a blazer. Okay. Technically, by definition. Anyway. You know, think of old, like, professors. Right. Okay. Th so they were blazers. Size is 46. It is two button. Uh, it is not brown. It is blue. It is department men. Size type regular. No, size type. Big and tall. There we go. Okay. I also wanted to mention Just that... Just size, 50. While we were, yeah, put in all your measurements here. We did take a picture of the the Extra wipey board. Yep. We call it a wipey board because someone on YouTube called it, and we can't stop saying that now. <laughs> um, that's, absolutely, that's so true. And we changed the temperature of the lights, and we forgot to tell you. We made them a little bit warmer, which means a little bit oranger, because we were taking a picture of something blue. If you put blue light, which we recommend daylight, onto a blue garment, it tends to look black, because you have blue on blue on blue on blue on blue. Yeah, it washes it out. It makes it either look black or gray, mm -hmm. and it... it, it there's a real, we have a really hard time making blue things show accurate color on in our pictures. But now you'll see the pictures and they do look blue because we warmed up the light a little yeah. bit. And it's really easy to do on the lights we recommend. 
Yep. Check nice out our lighting vintage. video. No. <clears throat> Product lie in Laura Piana. I don't know about that. That's not, whatever. I'll just leave that. Yeah, I just leave that. All right. So we're going to copy, whoops, copy our title, paste it down here. That's for search engine optimization. Yeah. I recommend that everyone does Excellent that. Excellent pre-owned condition. Uh, let's see. 100% Laura Piana cashmere. Uh, this is fully lined two button whoops two button front four button cuffs and single vent there we go okay can i make one other suggestion please do where you have size 46 put the word extra long here in case they type in that you'll still get them extra long there you Great. go okay uh Mm -mm -mm -mm. And I'm going to list this guy. I'm going to go a little high. I'm going to go 124.95, and then hopefully get an offer. Okay. We're going to automatically decline offers lower than 50 bucks. Bless. <laughs> I need to start using this feature. <laughs> yes. Okay. This is eBay managed. It is not free shipping. We have to do shoes local for this guy. And that's we're charging uh, twelve ninety nine. Mm -hmm. That's in our business policy for this type of package. Product. Weight and dimensions we leave blank. Leave it you, blank. Uh, we are going to promote at what one percent or one point seven. I don't know. I've been trying one point seven. Let's try one point seven. I'm like who's going to do one point seven? <laughs> and we can go ahead and save this as a draft to list it tonight. Yep. Boom. Saved. Okay, and we always do the one-two check, so we'll each list it, and then at the end of the night when we're dropping in the pictures, I go through each listing and make sure there's no um, mistakes right. or anything wrong, and, and that's good. Yeah. Uh, okay, I think we're going to go shipping, but mm -hmm. I also I just wanted to say something. Say I think it. it's really important if you work with a partner that every each one of you understands every aspect of the business yeah, because we true. are not together sometimes. Like I'll go on a directing job out of town, and so Dan has to do everything, yep. or Dan will have to go to see family members, and I'll have to do everything. So if you don't know how to do everything, you can't keep your business going when one of you leaves. Right. And if this is showing you everything, both of us can list, and both of us can take photographs, and both of us can ship. Yep. Speaking of we, shipping. We got to get to it. Let's go do it. Okay. Action. Action. All right. We have all of our stuff pulled that all has to be it. shipped out today. We got all, all of it. All three things, you know, sometimes it's a slow day. Three. Three. Okay, we sold more than that, but they haven't paid yet. But oh, three. hate that. Girl, three. Three. It's fine. All right. We're thankful for them. We are. They're actually pretty good. So They're all pretty good. I'm going to start packing this stuff up, and as we go through, Annie will show you everything that is show you the things and tell you all the stuff about it. What it sold for, what we paid for it, why we bought it. We sold two pairs of shoes, so we're also going to talk about the boxes we're going to ship them in, and there might be some trial and error. Yes. We're learning about shipping different different ways of shipping shoes for cheaper. Whoa. Okay, these are Allegria. They're good comfort. Like, they're missing the insoles, which I noted. Hopefully the person read it. <laughs> We've been having a reading problem. <laughs> a lot of people are having issues reading. These are a Mary Jane style. So if they have a strap like that, that's called a Mary Jane. And these are comfort shoes. A lot of nurses wear this kind of thing. They're kind of like dance goes. Yes, these will fit in here perfectly. Okay, but where is it going? Um, Pennsylvania. That is not a good option. So let me check. We're going to check it before we pack it. We were going to use this regional rate box. Yeah, regional A to Pennsylvania is $11.21. Okay, so that's 11 bucks. I think that's too much. I think so. So let's see what other options we have and if we can get it lower. So we have uh, more priority boxes. You know what? This, the standard, the shoe box, How much is the shoe might box actually cost? end up being cheaper. It just depends on how much this guy weighs. So let's see. It's... Seven, five, fifteen. Okay. Okay. Can we How get? What do they weigh? One point, one pound. What's this? Three box? ounces. So you know, with this box, it'll be one, one pound, pound seven, seven ounces. ounces. This is one pound seven ounces in that shoe box is 
1064. Ooh, cheaper. Okay, cheaper. what if we put it in our own box? Oh, okay. Because I don't know if this box will work, but like I'm looking for a box that would house them adequately. Yes. But like minimally. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're learning. We're going to try. Yeah. So like would they fit in that? And would it be cheaper? This is why you tuned in. People love a good mystery. Oh, uh, okay, okay. 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 So now what's this box? I mean, I'd be okay with that, right? Okay, so let's, is it squishing it? It's no, just barely. <laughs> so that's also, that's one eight. No, it, it went back down to seven, but then once you put tape, okay. Yeah, so that's gonna be one eight. But we're gonna measure it. We're gonna measure it. It is 11 yep. by eight okay. by four. 1064, same price as the shoebox. So we might as well put it in the shoebox. Yep. Because then it has room to breathe. Yep. Okay, at least to, we tried. And we get to save our box for something else. Right, and this is <laughs> the smallest box it would have fit in. There you go, right. there you have it. Now we know. Now we know. And we had a little extra time today because... Because <laughs> we only have three things to ship out. So we can try play Cinderella with the boxes. Yeah. Who doesn't want to see this content? <laughs> Oh yeah, it's good to package these separately because they're patent and they can kind of stick to each other. So no bueno. These did have V-E-L-C-R-O on them. Oh. Don't use that in your listing, y'all. Hot tip. Hot tip. Again, that phrase is trademarked at the Hustle Couple Inc. <laughs> <laughs> you have ended my life. <laughs> Okay. Y'all, he bought this website, thehuzzlecouple.com. There is nothing on it, but he, he was like, oh no, we are trademarking this. <laughs> you, gotta, yes. you gotta act fast, man. You gotta, you gotta protect your intellectual property. Your hot tips. <laughs> exactly right. It's like, it's like everybody, everybody should, whether you plan on using it or not, everybody should go register your own name domain. We like, both have ours. That's just, that's just... What That's if you have a common idea. name, though? You well, know, you better you better get on you it better quick. Better get on it <laughs> and just hold on to it because you can make money selling those. If somebody famous has your name and they want that domain and they can't get it, come on! Oh my god! <laughs> All right. Next. So I gotta re-input the size of this box because I. Okay, I'm gonna try to find a box for this box. Box for the box. Mm -hmm. So these are some Toms. And they're slippers that Dan bought for himself, but he hated them I with a hated them. capital H. Hated them. I don't know. And they're just Tom's. And they come in the original box. I think the sticker is what sold it. I said it included a sticker. Uh-oh. So these are going as brand new, except there's some little fuzz from when you tried them on. That's so, right. that's yet. That's but right. I can love those sticker. <laughs> these, like, I've tried very, I have... Dan's I have issues. Break it down for you. <laughs> I have issues with slippers. They don't fit my feet. I've never found a good pair of slippers. No ever. shoes fit my feet. I wear birds. So instead of slippers, I wear these all birds as my slippers because <laughs> they're very comfortable. We both have feet issues. Did you guys know your feet change size? I did not know this, but apparently Ooh, they can. That's, that's way, too way too tall. Well, it's hard to tell the height of a thing because right. the width when it's in here. I agree with that. Come on, come on. I might have to go. I might have to upgrade. Okay. Because we need a long, flat box. Oh, oh it's too oh, tiny. Too tiny. I think I need to go. These are all going to be too tall. We've got to find a box oh, for the. There we go. I don't know. There we go. Look short. Mm -mm. There we go. I think this is going to be good. Well, it is a shoebox. Is it? I think it's too short. <gasps> like a glove! <laughs> Perfect. Just do it. That's what I'm trying <laughs> if you let me. It says just do it on the box. <laughs> Should we put some bubble on this? No. <laughs> put on Excuse this part. What if no. they want their window? They can have their window. Oh, you put tape king on here? Good. I was brave. I know. Ooh. Hello. Oh, for the moldy book people, there's a couple comments about the moldy book that we saw yesterday. Thank you for your comments. Uh, it wasn't the book I was smelling. It was the Tape King. Okay. But 
I know it, the tape king kind of smells like moldy. Don't buy that tape. But I appreciate what you're saying. PSA. Stay away from tape king. Stay away from tape king, tape king and moldy books. Okay. Also, update on the heating pad. <laughs> Y'all come here for the updates every day. Yeah. So we got a return request because it didn't work. The heating pad said it didn't work in the title. It was listed as four parts, and it said it was non-functional in all caps in the description. Literally three times. Does not work. I actually wrote a whole paragraph about how they could repurpose this thing for a prop, etc., etc., etc. Excuse me. So. You're about to get. Did you ask for it back? How did you handle it? Yeah, I asked for it back. <laughs> I said, as soon as I get it back, I'll be able to give you a refund. But just to let you know, it was clearly marked as not working three different places. So no matter what you do to your listings, sometimes people ain't gonna read them. I think more often than not, people are not gonna they read them. They just don't read it at all. It's weird. Is this like a new thing? People just don't read. And we spend so much time, not we, resellers in general, so much time, you know? Trying to be accurate in yeah. the descriptions. Okay. But you know what? We don't let it get us down. Returns are just part of doing business. That's right. And we eat. Ooh. I wouldn't have asked for it back, but this man asked for it back. Seems Two pounds, like. five ounces. We're gonna need some labels to cover up these other labels. Okay. Ten. 14, 5, 10, 14, 5, all right, there you go. We're just putting some blank labels from our Dymo label printer. Ooh, that's what we could do tomorrow, set up the Dymo for people, especially our friend Janice. She bought the Dymo and she hasn't set it up yet. Yep. Let's show, we'll show you, and we'll show you how to print a Mercari label. We'll do it. Yes, we will. Because people think you can't, and you can. Whether you have a Dymo or a Rolo, printing a 4x6 label on Mercari is 100% possible. Yep. Oh, I could have just used that. You could have just, yeah, that was... Sorry. Okay, it's okay. That was redundant. Sorry. Okay. And last but not least... Oh. Anderson. Oh, we didn't even tell people what these sold for. Sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. The Alleg Allegria shoe sold for $19.95 plus $9 shipping, or $12.99 shipping, excuse me. The Tom sold for $39.95 plus $12.99 shipping. Sweet. And the Hander, Hander, Hander. Han Hannah Anderson Pink Ruffle French Heart Dress New Tag sold for $39.95. Excellent. Plus like nine bucks shipping. Look at this thing. It's a dress. I'm not going to unfold it because we're about to put it away. It's very cute. This is the brand, Hannah Anderson. If you see it, not everything is great, but new tags is pretty good. Uh, this is a size 140. Look up a size chart and then put that in your listing. How it converts, US 10. Okay. So cute. So cute. I don't buy all Hannah Anderson. I really don't because sometimes... Especially pre-owned. Don't it, pay up. What, is it a kid's a kid's? Yeah, brand? and and sometimes they make mommy and me uh, things, okay, okay. but it's mainly kids. And uh, I bought this because I thought for pride it might be good because of the heart and it was new with tags. I think I paid like three bucks. With kids clothes, I'm not as good. It says seven seventy nine actually. Okay, I paid seven seventy nine. <laughs> Oh, I think I got this for a friend, for her kid. Uh, but then the kid couldn't wear tags, like they couldn't sensory issue or something. Oh, okay. So then I was like, oh, okay, so I'll sell it. All right. But like, we find a ton of this at Arvin Will, and I normally don't get it. Should I be getting this it? Is, is this over a pound? No, I told you. I told it was you right that, on the edge, Yeah, it's right? 15 ounces. Okay. So if we just put it in a poly, we're going to be okay here. We absolutely are. Give now I know what you guys are saying. You have to round up the 15 point whatever because the poly mailer is going to add a little bit. And I know, you're right. So we're at 15.3. Yep. So we have to round that up to 16. Um, if you didn't see the last video where we talked about this, you absolutely can ship uh, something that weighs 16 ounces first class on eBay. 
you just have to input the weight as 16 ounces and then you can ship first class. If you put it in as one pound, uh, the system will default to priority and it won't let you choose first class. Right. So as long as you put it in as 16 ounces, you should be good to go first class. And that's because eBay has a special deal with the post office. Yeah, it's commercial first class. Uh, I saw on eBay thrifters today and yesterday two people that commented. This is a Facebook group that I don't recommend. <laughs> it's quite, it's a downer. But they were taking their package to the post office to pay for postage. Oh, why would you do that? But maybe people here are new and they're beginners. Don't do that. That costs retail rates, which are like 30% higher at least than what eBay has negotiated with the post office so oh, you want to at the very least. at the very least so you want to buy your postage at home and watch our videos we show you how to do it you don't necessarily need a thermal printer you can print it on the computer and tape it on that we do recommend a thermal printer because it saves so much time yeah i mean when you have three whole packages you, <laughs> you need to save the time yes you do speaking of three packages here's the first one this is the allegra issues no problem Help you out. I'll help you. Oh, oh, thank you. You are in a rush. Yeah. Okay. Next is the Toms. There we go. Thank you. All right. And that guy. Dan's gonna run this to the post office. You're gonna check in with Mojo, and then you're gonna come back here to see what we actually made today. Hooray! Yikes. <laughs> it's moment with Mojo. Hey, buddy. <coughs> I gotta go to the post office, say bye. <coughs> Good boy. Good boy. All right, guys, we're here at the post office with the self-serve machine. We're gonna get these packages scanned in. I am back from the post office, all three packages scanned and dropped off. So now it's time to find out what we really made. Hi, so these are our tickets. I couldn't decide whether to put free or $12.99 on this. I don't know. They were mm -hmm. Dan's personal and we didn't pay for them out of the business. So I just put free. There you go. Okay, so I am on, if you go to my eBay and then go to payments and all transactions. That's the screen I'm on, and I'm going to say this for the new people. There's a lot of new people. The number that this gives you in red and in black, so in red is the fees, and in black is the amount that the customer paid plus the amount you charge for shipping, all combined. There are no taxes on this screen. We don't worry about sales tax. eBay takes sales tax on our behalf and remits it. We don't touch it. I don't look at it. I don't subtract it. I don't add it. I don't, I don't touch it. And I suggest that you do the same thing. That's why we pay eBay fees. They do that for us. So on this all transactions page, all you're getting is the cost that they paid for the item plus the cost you charge for shipping, if any. All right. Okay. So hopefully that's really clear. The Allegria shoes are right here. $28.94 was the total. They paid for shipping, so it was $19.99 plus our $8.99 shipping or whatever. Right. Okay, and then the fees here, you can see it was promoted, and so I'm going to add $3.69 plus $0.20, cents, so $3.89. I'm going to write that in my fees category. It sold on the 25th, and we paid shipping today. We paid $10.64, so we lost a little bit of money on shipping. And that happens sometimes since we do a flat rate. We charge 8 dollars 
or priority and then sometimes we charge $12.99 for shoes let's see what they actually paid for shipping $28.94 minus $19.95 yep $8.99 so I probably should have charged a $12.99 rate oh well Okay. But these these small overages will usually wash out at the end from other transactions where we make a little bit on shipping. Exactly. We're better at it than we used to be. <laughs> For sure, yeah. Okay, so the Hannah Anderson here is $44.94 was the total amount paid to us. And the amount they paid for the item was $39.95 and then we charge $4.99 shipping. If you add those together, that equals $44.94. Okay. And that's the same number that's here. No taxes. Right. Okay. So the fees for this were $6.08 and we paid $5.72 to ship it. So again, we lost a little money. It's okay. We lost 72 cents. Yeah. It's okay. Most of the time we gain a little money on, I would say, a little yeah. couple of cents here and there. Yeah. Okay, and then we have the Toms, and those went for $52.94. Here's where it's going to come in. So they sold for $39.95, and I charged them $12.99 to ship those puppies. And the red here says $6.49 in fees. They were not promoted. I mean, they probably were. We promoted everything. They just didn't sell under a promoted listing. Right. That's something that people don't understand a lot. Just because you promote it doesn't mean that the buyer clicked on the promotion. That's true. So sometimes you don't pay the fee. I'd say about half the time we pay the fee, which is we promote at 1%, and the other half, nothing. Yep. Two out of three of these didn't sell promoted. Okay, and then for shipping on the times, we actually pay $12.94, which is right on the money. We charge $12.99. It costs $12.94. All right. Pocket those five cents. Oh, man, we're rich. <laughs> so now I'm going to go into Vendu here, and I'm going to type in each one of these. Tom. All right. Let me show the people what's going on here. Slippers. Let's see. Active. Rodeo slippers, eh? Um, if you say so. Marcus sold. So here we put the entire price, the cost of the item was zero. The marketplace fees were six forty nine, and the shipping that we paid was twelve ninety four. The reason we put the whole price here is because, as you just saw, we gained five cents in shipping, so we want to have an accurate total of our profits. Right. Hopefully, that makes sense. Our total profit on these in green is thirty three fifty one. Nice. Not bad. Well, we put the cost of goods at zero for that, yeah, so yeah, we got a little freebie. Slightly inflated. Hannah Anderson. You can see I buy this brand sometimes. So we have three things. Sold on eBay. Again, we're putting the total price including shipping, which is $44.94. The cost of the item was $8.43. Here you go. This is an example. Before we had a reseller permit, uh, we paid 8.25% sales tax. So if there's not a star by the number, I know that we paid sales tax. So I added in here. Okay. I said no taxes, but if you paid the tax at the store, <laughs> right. you want to account for that for your deductions. Okay, eight forty three marketplace fees were six oh eight, and the shipping was five seventy two. We made twenty four seventy one on that garment. I'll take it. And the Allegria, this is not as great, but these were in the death pile. We got them listed, and they sold really quickly. Right. So. And they were right; they were missing the insoles, yeah. so they were. Not, we had to discount them for that fact. Right. So. Okay, eBay, Marcus sold. They sold for, not nineteen ninety five. they did, but when we had shipping, they sold for twenty eight ninety four. the price they paid for shipping. We paid eight ten for these. Oh, good lord. I don't know how that happened. This was, they were old, I'm telling you, I think they were part of a thread up box. Oh, maybe, yeah. We don't do those anymore. Marketplace. I don't care if you want to see them. I'm not doing it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not doing it. It's just we waste money. And shipping was ten sixty four. This is what happens. And you end up having to list stuff you don't want to list. We only made $6.31 on those. I'm pretty sure it was a thread-up box. I would never have bought something without insoles. Right. All right. What do we make today? Let's see. It's an exciting day, I tell you. Today. Three items oh. sold. 
126 in sales and 64.53 in profit. Bum, 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 bum. Wah, wah. Oh man, this 50% <laughs> cut, the 50% between profit and revenue is no good. No. It's just not where we want to be. We want to be a third. Yeah. And or two thirds over here, one, you know, we want to exactly. pay a third in fees and stuff. So, we're going to keep working on it. I don't know. There's not nothing's populating. It's fine. Uh we're starting to list more each day, and we're listing a variety of things. I swear if we were sourcing, these numbers would skyrocket because we're much better at sourcing now. That's true. What we're doing is trying to avoid COVID. Mm, true. And we're listing stuff that we bought a long time ago. And with that comes not great not great buys. Like, we spent 8 bucks on those shoes. I didn't buy those shoes. I know I didn't buy those shoes. Did you buy those shoes? <laughs> I don't remember buying those shoes. I think they came in a thread out box. I think so. But that's the kind of thing we're kind of juggling right now. And if you're in that same boat, let us know below so we're not alone. Right. Uh, I swear we're better resellers than this, but we're going to get this stuff listed. It's in our house. So we got to just list it. It's better to make a few bucks on it than to make no bucks. Exactly right. <laughs> so we're going to trudge through it. I think we got about two more weeks of this, and then we'll be back to thrifting. Sweet. Okay, everybody. <laughs> that is another Daily Grind video in the books. Uh, if you've learned anything... I'm going to hear, remind you, please give us a like and even a subscribe would be great. That would be the best gift ever. Sure would. Thank you so much. We appreciate all your comments and feedback. It's invaluable to us. Yeah, we will see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Bye.